India's transport infrastructure sits at a collision point of technology disruptions, shifts in capital availability, evolving social and environmental priorities, and rapid urbanization. Modern ports, stronger bridges, faster trains, highways and expressways, the artery of a nation with an estimated growth at a CAGR of 19.73% is touching the lives of everyone, impacting the economy, environment and the society. Technological advances, increased competition and the demand for shorter construction times is driving the trillion dollar industry. According to Geospatial Earth Report, the geospatial market in transport infrastructure is estimated to grow from approximately 1,355 crore rupees to 2,770 crore rupees in 2025. Digital technologies, sensors, drones and BIM has become the enabler for infrastructure projects in the planning, designing, construction and overall management phases. It has been powering India's mega infrastructure projects for end-to-end -end integration of processes across the value chain ranging from Jaywar International Airport, Navi Mumbai International Airport, Janab Rail Bridge, Delhi Mumbai Trade Corridor, Bharat Mala Pariyujana, Sagar Mala Project, High Speed Rail Project to the recently launched PM Gati Shakti, the national master plan for multimodal connectivity. Besides, the policy initiative mandating the use of LiDAR in highway projects has been a notable addition for the holistic development of the infrastructure sector and in realizing Atmanirbhar Bharat. Integrated geospatial and BIM technologies offer a host of benefits to the construction industry. From timely detection of clashes to better scheduling, planning and cost estimation, assuring increased ROI and profitability. It can boost productivity in the Indian infrastructure sector by at least 25 to 30 percent, reduce the construction cost by 33 percent, with 50 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emission. It's time to change the way we design, build and maintain infrastructure. It's time to build GeoSmart Infrastructure. Good morning. I'm Sanjay Kumar, uh, CEO of Geospatial World. Uh, first of all, welcome to uh, this conference uh, on GeoSmart Infrastructure. It's a very uh, important topic and it's important uh, occasion. As you can imagine, some of you would have just come from different directions to this place. Uh, there are some uh, very heavy traffic at the moment around this place. So things are getting delayed and that's how we have delay of arrivals of our guests. But we have a long day program, so we don't want to actually wait too much of time, but to start with. So, let me just share some of the thoughts uh, around the importance of GeoSmart infrastructure event in our national development and our ambition. Uh, am I audible to you all? Okay, thank you. Yesterday we saw a news uh, that India became the fifth largest economy in the world. It just surpassed United Kingdom by a very small margin. But we all know about our aspiration and ambition to be $5 trillion economy. But if you look at how would you do that? Infrastructure is at the core of this ambition to be a $5 trillion economy. Currently, it is almost 10% of our GDP. And in last two, three years, when we all know about the COVID impacts or its 
negative impact on our economy. It is the infrastructure which has actually kept our economy going. And with the new post-COVID situation, our economy in last quarter grew almost around 21%. That 20% growth in last quarter is something which has actually made us in the global economy contribute and reach to the fifth largest economy status. And I'm sure that in next uh, five to seven years, which is 2030, and the infrastructure vision 2025, you'll see the role of infrastructure in our socioeconomic development is phenomenal. And it will be unparalleled. I was watching, a, seeing a tweet yesterday uh, when the American bank said, Bank of America said that India's pace and you know, uh, spread of infrastructure is just unprecedented. I think that in last eight years, Indian railways have extended 90% more tracks in the country. And so has highways, expressways, metros, all that and airports, all that kind of transport infrastructure, and then you're also looking at infrastructure, which is water. A very important, uh, you know, infrastructure is water. We all know about uh, the ambition of the country and the political leadership to make it every household to get tap water. That would be a phenomenal infrastructure too. So I would say that infrastructure is the biggest driver of our ambition to be a five trillion economy and beyond. Let me just share with you that there are around, you know, by 2050, we will be about nine point some billion population in the world. And by 2050, as per the World Bank estimates, 70% of the need of the infrastructure has to be built. So whatever is the need of by 2050 of this country as a world as a whole, 70% of that has to be built. And you just imagine 30% of that has to be rebuilt, which means that the entire infrastructure will be a kind of new infrastructure what we need in next 30 years. And that is what is the global connotation. We all hear about the economic revival or economic acceleration of the United States is largely depending on infrastructure bill which they have just produced and the kind of investment they are making into that infrastructure uh, you know, in the US. And why do they need that much of push despite having the best infrastructure is the fact that their infrastructure is aging and they need to build the new age infrastructure, the multi-model infrastructure. And all that multi-model transport infrastructure is driven by the technology innovation and digitalization. So one is the fact that you're talking of infrastructure as the driver of our ambition. Second is that if you want to make sure that our investments in this infrastructure, I was talking to member NHI, he said that last year they spent about 170,000 crores. 170,000 crores, which is $20 billion plus, in, is spent in one year on highways. Just imagine. And how do we make sure that that investment is more effective and efficient? Effectivity and efficiency or productivity and most important is the compliance. Because what you're building today, you need to maintain, manage that tomorrow. So that compliance and effectivity and productivity will come from the adoption of the technology. And that technology adoption is nothing but digitalization of the constructions and the project management and the whole infrastructure work, workflow. And that digitalization is where I would say that geospatial technology, uh, you know, why geospatial world is organizing this conference is the fact that entire digitalization, which would empower infrastructure and make it more efficient and effective, lies on the foundation of the fact of innovation taking place in the field of geospatial technology. 
the geospatial technology which we all know about positioning technologies, sensors, surveying, and then software capability which provides you three-dimensional analysis of the environment which we live in. And when I say environment, infrastructure is a very important component of the uh, physical world. And all that technology, what does it do is that it actually helps you view the infrastructure into third, fourth, and fifth dimension or sixth dimension. And all this three dimension, which is, uh, which is our eyes, which we can see that, but then fourth dimension, which is time, fifth dimension, which is cost, sixth dimension, which is options. You are looking at a, a different kinds of modeling. You're looking at option that if I make this infrastructure this way or that way or that way. It is the kind of modeling which we are looking at. And this technology like geospatial actually helps you understand that complexity and visualize the options so that you can actually play before you build, you can look at the whole infrastructure and its value proposition. So all this technology helps you to integrate your BIM process, make your BIM process more and more, I would say, visual. And that visual is actually connected by the, or rather I would say empowered by or supplemented by or augmented by the location technology, where is what. So in a digital connected environment, you are able to access and uh, understand that every asset where it is. And that is the core of connected constructions. So all this will actually help you reduce your class detection because this entire life cycle is from plan, design, build and maintain. It will reduce your class detection. It will in make your projects complete on time. So if you just address this reduction of class detection and completion of projects on time, how much of time and cost and environmental damage you are going to be actually saving yourself from. That is the kind of value proposition which we bring as a technology. And why Geospatial World is organizing this conference uh, is the fact that Geospatial market globally is about $450 billion a year. It looks very a small technology, but I want to say that Geospatial market globally, which includes entire hardware, software, solutions, services, is about $450 billion. And why it is so big? Because today, almost role of geospatial technology is almost every walk of living, be it business enterprises, whether you use the tele, uh, you know, uh, shared uh, mobility, or you talk about infrastructure, you talk about underground infrastructure. All that is about geospatial modeling. Most important out of this 450 is 75 billion dollars of this is actually into AEC market. And that is the reason why Geospatial World has picked up infrastructure as a sector where we want to do, extend our role of evangelism and advocacy to promote utility and relevance and applications of Geospatial combined with BIM and making digital twin. Digital twin is a kind of ambition for us where we want to build a system where we can look at our infrastructure in totality for next 10, 20, 30 years because the role of digital twin is not only into the design phase or uh, construction phase, highly relevant for maintenance phase. Any kind of updation which is taking place around that infrastructure should be automatically updated into the digital twin environment and it should be able to uh, help you maintain that asset. In that view, this entire conference on geo-smart infrastructure powered by BIM and digital twin is very, very relevant. What we are talking today is going to be a very clear application in our ambition in 2025 and 2030. So I would say that in this backdrop, this conference is very, very important and I want to acknowledge and uh, recognize the contribution of uh, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways who became a co-organizer and they have agreed with us for three year event 
so that we can build this community. We can build this community of practitioners. We can showcase the value of this technology in our living, and we can work together to make our uh, you know infrastructure more resilient, more efficient, more transparent, and more compliant. And that would lay the foundation of modern India. So uh, with this, I thank you uh, once again to all of you for being here with us despite all the road challenges which we have right now and the traffic challenges. And I hand over the session to Anamika. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay, for putting your perspective to the conference and the road infrastructure and importance of technology in it. Mr. Amit Ghosh, the additional secretary, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, due to certain uh, work exigencies, he could not join us in person. So he had sent a message for us. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to the GeoSmart infrastructure and uh, address you on this occasion. Respected Sri Anan Sinhaji, Secretary Rural Development, Government of India. Shri Alok, member NHAI, other dignitaries on the dais, a distinguished audience. Uh, we are organizing the GeoSmart infrastructure conference after a gap of two years on account of the incidence of COVID. I'm happy to learn that more than 300 delegates have registered for this conference, which in itself is uh, a testimony to the success of the efforts put in by the organizers led by Mr. Sanjay Kumar. I'm happy to begin by mentioning that uh, the allocation for national highway construction this financial year uh, stands at the highest ever. In fact, uh, the if we look at the data, the figures for uh, budget allocation, the growth in allocation has been at a steady CAGR of 13 percent between from 2015 till now. So this is a, a great achievement of the ministry, and uh, this is also. Uh, it it uh, places great responsibility upon us to utilize these national resources very carefully and most efficiently and i'm and i'm of the opinion that geospatial technology can help us achieve those efficiencies we have the world's second largest national highway network and uh, the national highways amongst them constitute 1.3 lakh kilometers. National highway construction rate has improved by more than three times between 2014-15 and 2021 from 12.1 kilometer per day to 36.4 kilometers per day. Stakeholders in the highway construction agency have deployed various technologies for time and cost efficiencies, for example, ultra high performance concrete, precast concrete. MORTH has created various policies to support the wider adoption of these technologies to lend even greater pace to highway construction in the country. MORTH is undertaking various initiatives to tackle the challenges in creating quality infrastructure for the nation while optimizing time and cost, improving ease of business through innovative PPP models, to provide more rational risk sharing across shareholders in the road development sector. Identification of new projects for infrastructural synergies, coordinated planning and execution across government agencies under PM Gati Shakti framework, planning for disruptions such as COVID and, and on-time execution of planned projects under Bharat Mala Pariyoshna, improving average speed on economic corridors to reduce time and cost of freight movement on highways across the country, reducing pollution caused during construction and operational phase of highways by leveraging new materials and state-of-the-art technologies, including geospatial technology. As you know, Bharat Mala Pariyojana was conceptualized as an umbrella program with a corridor-based approach. Under this approach, we have adopted 
the origin destination model based on freight movement across 600 districts. We have mapped the shortest route for 12,000 routes carrying 90% of the freight. Technology based automated traffic surveys over 1500 points have been carried out and satellite mapping of corridors to identify upgradation requirements have been resorted to. Geospatial mapping has been leveraged for creation of better quality DPR. At this stage, I would like to mention that under the PM Gati Shakti framework, we have uploaded the uh, geospatial data pertaining to 1.41 lakh kilometer uh, to the uh, system put in place by BISAG N. Now, as you know, six uh, categories of projects were envisioned under Bharat Mala Parivashna, namely economic corridors, inter corridor and feeder corridors, national corridor efficiency improvement, border and international connectivity roads, coastal and port connectivity roads, greenfield expressways. If you see these various categories, there are great challenges as well as opportunities because I always say that each challenge presents an opportunity also. So there were great challenges and opportunities for deployment of geospatial technology. So if you look at the whole picture, under Bharat Mala alone, the government is building national highways of the length of 34,800 kilometer and the cost will be about 10 lakh crore. So, geospatial technologies uh, will be crucial in deciding on the optal, optimal highway network strategy leading to reduced logistics cost uh, and time across the country. So, as I mentioned, GIS mapping of national highways is being undertaken for planning, execution and monitoring of the road network and timely completion of projects. GIS maps contain a detailed visual representation of infrastructure, facilities including location, topography, facilities and structure as well as images. GIS maps contain a detailed uh, visual representation of all these things. BISA again has mapped more than 1.41 lakh kilometer of national highways and this is now being corroborated and verified by different agencies for the ministry including NHAI, state PWD, NHI, DCL and BRO. GIS is expected to aid all stakeholders in highway construction industry with building resilient infrastructure for the future through designing and finalizing highway networks and supporting strategic repairs and upgrades to existing networks. As on today, this technology is not in use in the LA process. I am happy to mention that uh, with effect from 2018, we have automated the process of approval of LA notifications and uh, now we have reached that stage the, that the Bhumi Rashi portal through which we have automated the process of approval, uh, we can now build in the GIS technology and we are trying to use GIS to plot every survey number and align them with viewing GIS enabled revenue and alignment maps. This enhanced feature in Bhumi Rashi portal would help Kala to plot survey numbers which we have to acquire through GIS based technology. Now with these uh, possibilities, I think that you know I would like to in the uh, as a you know my final point mention that there is a lot of scope for improving the quality of DPRs and while preparation of DPR uh, is going on use of geospatial technology can yield very accurate information which can be incorporated thereby improving the quality of DPRs. So uh, suffice it to say that uh, this conference, which has brought stakeholders from all sub -sec sectors of the road industry, uh, will help in exchange of information, exchange of knowledge, and uh, help also in building a common strategy for deploying 
geospatial technology for better leveraging the technology so that our national highway building efforts become more efficient and also most uh, more cost efficient thank you so much thank you shri amit ghosh for sending us this message and you have been a source of inspiration constant inspiration i would say for the industry by talking about how technology is getting adopted in the transport infrastructure sector may I now invite mr alok member administration from national highways authority of india that is nhai to share his perspective with our august gathering good morning everybody uh yesterday night i was told to participate in the conference so i thought i will not prepare anything i will just share my experiences in the national highway i am happy to be here because uh, i was thinking all during the uh, during the stay of uh, in nhi and earlier i was pwd rajasthan why technology is not being used in this sector to the extent it was because earlier i was working in power sector and there every second technology was being used and we was hooked on to low dispatch centers information and every wire was being monitored i remember i was cmd of a transmission company of rajasthan and in fact that time we have mapped all the towers because each second was important there road sector being a static sector where roads are big being built every day but we were not considering many things which now with this type of collaboration we can think of doing so best thing which is happening in the road sector is we are totally working on partnership nhi those spending as one of our uh, colleague mentioned that last year we spent around 1 lakhs 66000 crores the number of people working in nhi is only around 1200 so we work with our in fact independent uh, engineers are also independent engineers every project has an independent engineers we have enough number of dpr consultants so basically along with all these partners induction of technology in nhi is dependent on all the partners i am not a competent person to deliberate on all the progresses which are taking place in the technology but at the same time i feel that with this type of conference we can come out with solutions because we can standardized our different technology to be used in the road sector recently i traveled from varanasi to hyderabad on road and i felt that if there were many issues which can be tackled if there is a proper induction of the technology there are dhabas there are accident points there are safety issues so with the progress which is happening and with the econo economy which is growing at this scale and all of us know that around maximum traffic is on national highways we have an opportunity for induction of this technology in fact just chit chat i have i was having in this tea room some of our members have come up with drones being used for this construction sector in fact we were also cooperating with iit kanpur for use of drones for monitoring the project uh, we are on the way of consultation but with this conference i am happy that we can induct many technologies which you are developing in nhi nhi we don't have problem in accepting any of the technology recently i have been given the task of looking after it of nhi and i am happy this is the first day i was going to review the it which is happening in nhi and now i have started with this conference so i can convey to you that the scale of opportunity of technology induction in highway sector is huge because when i was in ministry of power we used to sit in from sakti bhavan and there was a uh, there was a project monitoring room and a, there was a room where each and every uh, generation and transmission things was monitored so anybody can walk in that room and we can 
discuss about what is happening. But this is not happening in the road sector. We have around 600 toll plazas where FASTEC, we are monitoring that whether a vehicle is being passed through that lane in a particular time framework or not. That is what is we are expecting. We have set up a control room in NHI, but we need to develop. We need to have data which is more perfect. See, there are congestions on highways which we can we can monitor by sending messages to people how you uh, when you start your drive, etc., etc. So, huge number. It is is huge number of ideas can be inducted into the highway sector. As Amit mentioned about uh, use of Bhumi Rasi portal for monitoring of payments in land parcels and accuracy of land parcels, these all technology can be used. Incidentally, I had a opportunity to work in the government of Rajasthan in the revenue sector, land revenue sector, where we have digitized all the maps and we were doing using Worldview 3 satellite imageries for survey and survey. So, I think road sector has issues of land, road sector has issues of toll collection. So many vehicles are moving every second. So these technologies, if combined with construction, BIM you mentioned, uh, BIM is there, but many of the countries have adopted BIM in a great way. But as far as India is concerned, we have not done it. We are monitoring projects day by day in last two years because once I came, the COVID started, we have monitored the project, we have executed the project, we have cut down the delays, but still there is enough to do. So what I see is with all of you partnering with partnering with transport sector, we can do wonders. Because see that the, the, the type of the type of opportunities which is which is being thrown by Bharat Mala 2 also coming up. Bharat Mala 1, we are spending around 10 lakh crores and much, much more money will be spent there. In fact, if you see highway sector, last year when monetization was started, we have been given 26% of target of monetization. Last year we monetized around 20,000 crore. Uh, we And that too only with around 600 kilometers of road. We have so many kilometers of national highway. So you can understand there is a huge, huge, huge potential. After constructing ONM phase, repair and maintenance, all these will throw an opportunity. So what I can tell you is, please discuss what can be inducted in the road sector and I welcome you after whatever is decided, whatever is standardized, please give presentation in NHI on a specific technology. We are ready to adopt it. We are ready to integrate it with our own system. We don't have any... Uh, problem in accepting whatever best is happening in the world because you must have realized and with the feedback people are giving that at least in highway sector we are no less than any any other country. The type of construction we are doing, the speed with which we are constructing. In fact, uh, in Maharashtra, two months back, we created a Guinness Book of World Record in laying of roads. So that was 10 continuous days the, the whole system was working. 24 by 7 for 10 days and we created a Guinness Week of World Record. So we have an urge to do things. We have not many contractors we are working, but if this technology is integrated with all these things, I think we can do wonders. I have come here only to tell you these are the aspirations which we have in our heart and mind. Please cooperate with us and we will do the best. So basically what I was uh, urging you that you should come up with technologies and I am again happy to inform you that with our leadership, sir, is always for technology. We never, we, we discuss technology in our meetings. It's not that we only monitor things. So with his leadership, I can assure you whatever best technology you bring to us, we are ready to adopt and we are ready to take you to whatever level you want. Uh, Thank you for inviting me in this conference and I think uh, we will start a new partnership with road construction with the technology world. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Shri Alok Ji, for addressing precisely and emphasizing upon the importance of technology for users to unlock the value of diverse data set to enable applications of various types. I now invite on stage Shri S. K. Nirmal, Director General Roads and Special Secretary, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, to share his perspective with the August audience. Good morning, respected Honorable Minister Sri Gadkari Saab. Member NHA Sri Alokji, our colleagues of online, all friends from the road sector, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I am grateful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share our thoughts and experiences regarding use of geospatial technology in road sector. As already my colleague Mr. Amit has already told that uh, in India we have the second largest road network in the world after USA and that is about 6.3 million kilometers. Though national highways are only 2% and uh, state highways are only 3% and the remaining all is district roads or rural roads. But national highways are carrying more than 40% of the total traffic. When we see the entire whole network that about 65% of all goods in the country are transported through roads and 90% of the total passenger traffic uses this road network. So that is what is the importance of the road sector in the entire economy. In fact, the national infrastructure pipeline which is uh, talking about the road sector contribution is 18% so that is what shows the importance of the road sector. During the last a decade or so, we have seen a phenomenal growth in the road transportation network. In fact, if you see the budget allocation to the government of India, last year also it was a very high dump, that is 1.18 lakh crores was allocated to the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. And similarly, this year also about 1.99 lakh, so roughly 2 lakh kilometer, uh, 2 lakh crore has been allocated to our ministry already, sir. And the last five months we have spent 1 lakh crore in the road sector, in our uh, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways. So that is what is the kind of momentum which has been given by the Government of India to our national highway network and the road sector. In fact, when we have to achieve the goal, of US dollar 5 trillion economy by 2025, then the road sector has to play a very important role to achieve that kind of target. So, in order to ensure timely completion of projects, government has taken various proactive measures to revive languishing projects, solve operational issues, provide time bound dispute resolution, expedite land acquisition provide enhanced focus on road safety and adopt technology enabled solutions. In the last couple of years, we have seen a lot of focus being given by our ministry on road safety, green initiatives, digital transformation and augmentation of resources. And when we talk about the, this technology issues, then BIM, GIS, Artificial intelligence, machine learning, remote sensing, cloud computing, use of drones, use of lidars are some of the widely used technologies. Integration of BIM and GIS enabled the users to unlock the value in diverse data sets to enable application, including occupant engagement, sustainability analysis, disaster preparedness, and many more operational and management issues. Be it building a road infrastructure, bridges, the most important aspect is the planning stage. This covers everything from what material will be used, type of risk that is most suitable for the environment, project timeline, then 3D modeling aids in every stage of the planning process, enabling teams to build bridges that are bigger, more cost effective. So the geospatial technology and BIM are bringing changes across the infrastructure sector by bringing operational efficiencies, 
eliminating data redundancy and ensuring cost effective solutions in planning, design, engineering, construction, operations, and maintenance. It plays an incremental role in providing a broader con context to the AEC segment by integrating a special information and context with inbuilt data. Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways have taken various initiatives for promoting use of IT in a big way. In fact, even in the area of road safety, we have in 2021 issued a gazette notification that now electronic monitoring and enforcement will be done in under Motor Vehicle Act and under this scheme, the electronic enforcement device that is including a speed camera, closed circuit television camera, speed gun, body wearable camera, dashboard camera, automatic number plate recognition, vein motion and such technologies have been specified under the Act. And the electronic enforcement device will be used for enforcement of traffic rules, issuance of chalans. So state governments will ensure that appropriate electronic enforcement devices are placed in all high risk and high density corridors on national highways and state highways and all critical junctions so as to monitor this, all these issues closely. In fact, GIS mapping of entire national highway network is one of the most important requirements for planning execution and monitoring of national highways. To achieve this task, Ministry has already tied up with Bhaskar National Institute of Space Applications and Geoinformatics, that is BISEGAN. And as on date, I think uh, a lot of improvement, a lot of progress has been made as, uh, and very shortly we will complete the mapping of our entire national highway network under GIS mapping. Our ministry has also executed MOU, MOU with the Defense Geoinformatic Research Establishment, that is DGRE, which is a premier laboratory of defense research and development organization, DRDO, known for its expertise in the area of landslide and snow avalanche mitigation techniques. So we will effectively use the use uh, IT techniques in these areas. I'm sure that digitalization will change the way of gathering data required for design of roads, Already successful applications of remote sensing data, AEM, drone, and LIDAR survey, machine learning have already been incorporated in our highway projects. In fact, in DPR preparation also, we are using extensively these technologies. And considering the importance of the technology, in fact, in Indian Road Congress also, has, we have set up a new committee for use of how to promote use of IT and documentation in the IT sector. I hope this conference will provide a platform to share experience about latest development all around the world in geospatial technologies, which will be very much helpful for infrastructure sector. Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Nirmalji, for sharing your perspective. Uh, I now invite uh, Sri Nagendra Nath Sinha, Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development, to share his thoughts with us gathering. Honorable Minister of Transport and Highways, Shri Nitin Gadkari ji, Shri Nirmal ji, esteemed guests on the dais and <clears throat> uh, in the house. I'm thankful for giving me this privilege for uh, sharing some of your thoughts as to what this ministry is doing in the area of utilization of the geospatial technologies. Let me begin by saying that uh, the Ministry of Rural Development has heavily invested in the use of GIS technologies. Managing asset generation and targeting beneficiaries in a large di and diverse country like India is not possible until unless you do the geospatial mapping. You can't reach what you can't see. The foundation was set by ensuring that every key asset and activity is geotagged and digitized across RD schemes, and we have done it. Uh, extremely successfully in the area of the PMGSY, so I will say part of that journey. We have uh, digitized the entire rural road network and habitations on the GIS platform, and it was a tremendous effort involving state governments, remote sensing centers, private sector, CDAC, NIDA, all coming together. It took about four years, but uh, we have done it, and it is paying us rich dividends. 
when pm gsy 3 was designed the digitization of data was complete and uh, it helped us choose roads from among uh, a, a large uh, a bouquet of about 45 lakh kilometers only about 2% were to be selected how do we choose that that's a issue and the selection of those roads is not only based on what uh, uh, people at the local level want without reference to the utilization of the road so uh, selecting only 2% roads on the basis of uh, their likely utilization is was the key problem issues uh, and the assets which are required to be accessed and easily accessed are the educational agricultural and health facilities so <clears throat> this couldn't have been left entirely to the uh, field forces and there are issues uh, with which you are all well aware of so in this context uh, uh, trace map algorithm was developed which simulated traffic from every habitation to these socio economic facilities and this uh, simulated traffic was then used to rank every segment of rural road network to aid the field engineers in their planning process they could choose any choice of roads and uh, but uh, those which emerged at the top from this simulation process were to be necessarily included in the bouquet of the roads from which the selections would ultimately be made the public representatives of course uh, had their own choices and all of these were put together and on that basis uh, the selections was made um, we are quite happy to tell you that uh, through this process two out of the three roads which were finally proposed were recommended by the trace map algorithm so you can see the power of the uh, geospatial technologies in making the selection more evidence based more uh, logical and rational the tables uh, the road uh, proposals which were made earlier were made either in tabular format or text format but the <clears throat> this uh, converting this to a spatial uh, location and analyzing that was not very easy uh, expertise was lacking uh, the software were not available and therefore it, we analyzed only what was presented to us rather than all the uh, set of choices that could have been uh, uh, considered in order to arrive at the final choice of routes uh, <clears throat> to fix that uh, we developed a geo search platform which allowed engineers to draw plate uh, proposals over satellite imagery on a login based web platform now from block engineers to people uh, in the nrida or anyone else could view the proposed road alignments on the satellite imagery imagery and 21 additional layers such as the uh, socio economic facilities water bodies etc so in addition to the cost audit that we were doing earlier we also uh, have a, another set of scrutinies uh, which are now called as planning audit which considered the issue of utility of the proposals and uh, they, thereafter make the necessary selections now <clears throat> now that we have a large body of data we have uh, in the month of february i guess uh, we have put that out to the public uh, under the government open data license uh, so this rich data set will uh, enable startups policy researchers rural entrepreneurs to build on uh, make use of that data for bharat uh, our digital public goods will ensure that the roads that we have built and the data that have been captured can be utilized by anyone who uh, uh, wants to make use of for uh, serving the uh, in rural india other uh, departments in the uh, and other divisions in the ministry of rural development are also extensively using gis 
uh, we are beyond the stage of just geotagging for the sake of it. Additional algorithms are needed to make use of massive GIS, GIS data sets. Uh, PMYG geotag pictures are taken at, at least at five stages. Uh, and if there are more stages in the, involved in the construction, then some more uh, are uh, taken. And this, in, this ensures that uh, people don't just pass on a photograph of any scheme uh, just like that. It's, it, it's the, uh, the uh, photograph of that particular uh, uh, house only, which is uh, included in the uh, pictures. And uh, therefore, uh, it has boosted our vigilance and monitoring of the entire process. In the NREGS, uh, we take three geotag pictures uh, from start progress to finish, so we know how the work is progressing and how it's looking like. More importantly, uh, utilizing the uh, remote sensing data and other geospatial data sets available from the ISRO National Remote Se uh, Sensing uh, Center, <coughs> We have developed a platform for soil and water conservation, that is watershed planning. Uh, it's known as Yukdhara, and out of about uh, 2.69 lakh gram panchayats, we have done this planning exercise for uh, about 2 lakh 60 thousand gram panchayats. And now all the natural resource management works can be selected without. Uh, in a very objective manner uh, uh, without doing this exercise over and over again. So that's a great uh, uh, piece of work that has been done. In the urban mission that uh, aims to improve uh, uh, the urban-like facilities, the basic services and the economic growth in the areas which have fast population growth and uh, uh, fast economic growth, their geospatial planning is being done so as to put the planning of those urban areas on a uh, very uh, uh, scientific platform on a long-term basis. We are also using GIS to connect disparate data sets. Uh, it's easy to connect data sets in terms of uh, latitudes and longitudes. Uh, for example, using NREGS data sets and PMGSY habitation data, we are able to identify pockets where the uh, the uh, NREGS works are not appropriately distributed. Uh, for example, with this, we are able to find out if the works in a gram panchayat are focusing only on a particular village or a subset of villages of the gram panchayat, or it's informally distributed, evenly distributed. So that it kind of helps us also in looking at the equity aspects as well. Uh, we are also trying to uh, connect uh, the data sets from the Swaksh Bharat Mission, uh, from the PM Avas Yojana Grameen, uh, the PM GSY data sets, uh, all to see if there are habitation which we have missed uh, in, the process, in the course of mapping and then uh, probably take that also into considerations while designing the new sets of the rural road uh, 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 programs. A few years ago, the GIS was considered emerging technologies at the Ministry of Rural Development. It's uh, now an established technology and we are moving towards use of AI and ML algorithms to make sense and fully utilize our massive GIS data sets. For example, we are using AI technologies to scan through satellite imagery to identify which settlements have not yet been geotagged and uh, uh, which needs to be uh, brought into the rural road network. We are also thinking if we could uh, 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 utilize uh, this to uh, ensure that the machines that are deployed uh, for the road construction are doing the uh, work uh, that they are required to do and uh, appropriate number of passes and uh, things like that have been done. Uh, ongoing effort endeavor would be uh, to prepare the DPRs in terms of the not only the linear uh, linear terms but also in 3D terms, so so that uh, we have uh, the DPRs uh, uh, from the stage of preparation of the DPRs to measurements and every data set uh, being uh, in a 3D manner uh, uh, 
uh, on a 3D uh, data sets and uh, de further designing etc could be taken on that platform. So future is not GIS or AIML or any such technology isolation, but how can we blend different technologies and make them work for our beneficiaries and policy objectives so that the public money that is being spent through the uh, uh, government uh, coffers of the central government, of the state government is put to best use. Uh, so that's our quest and uh, we are using uh, all these sets of technologies including geospatial technology for this purpose. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sri Nagendra Nath Singh Sanadi. You have rightly stated that GIS data has enabled infrastructure planning, management, and monitoring. And not only this, the extensive uh, integrated MIS and GIS solution has the potential to create uh, new services for businesses and citizens and give a boost to the economy and especially the rural economy. Now I take the opportunity to invite our Honorable Minister, Sri Nitin Gadkari, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways to present the inaugural address. So. Sriman N.M. Sinaji, Secretary for Minister of Rural Development. Sri S.K. Nirmal, Director General of MRTH. Alok Kumarji, our member NHI, Sri Sanjay Kumar, CEO, Geospatial World, Ms. Anmika Das, Vice President, Product Management, Geospatial World, Distinguished Dignitaries, Guests, and Dear Friends. This is our, today's subject is very important because in Indian scenario, our Prime Minister dream is to make Indian economy of five trillion dollars. And for that reason, we need to develop the four sectors which are very important for the country. The water, power, transport and communication. And without that, we cannot increase our GDP growth rate. And without growth rate, we cannot create more employment potential. And without employment potential, we cannot eradicate the poverty. So basically, the most important problem is development of good infrastructure in the country. Just uh, Mr. Sinaji was giving a reference of Pradhan Mantri Gram Sadak Yojana. I know because under my chairmanship, Atal Bihari Bajpayee was appointed a committee for connecting all villages of the country. And at that time, I was preparing the report for that. The one of the member of the committee was Mr. Vivek Savan from SIDAC. There are a lot of expert people in the committee. And uh, actually at that time, I'm talking about 2002 or three something. I was young minister in Maharashtra, particularly I was at that time making Mumbai Pune Express Highway 55 flyovers and Verli Bandra ceiling project in Mumbai. And Bajpayee called me. At that time, we prepared the report. And the report is so, really, it's a very good report. And everything was there. Even if the soil data, if you can give to the software, was developed, by which you will get the design of the road also. But fortunately, the problem in the government and in the system is we need to understand what are our strengths and what are our weaknesses. Problem is every department and the majority people, the stakeholders, they're always thinking in silos. And there is no cooperation, coordination and communication between the stakeholders. That is the big problem. Now the three important things which I feel which are very important for development of good infrastructure in the country is cost audit quality audit and performance audit. The most important thing which always I feel that the time is the most important thing. The problem is with understanding or without understanding. Every time there is delay and that delay we face a lot of problems. Extension of work, COAs. I never understand. Many people go through the file. 
I just give suggestion that you can go using digital technology. You can find out what is the extension of work, what is the additional scope of work. On the basis of that, you can see on your screen and you will get the information. But the performance audit, cost audit and quality audits are very important. And the most problem related with all the ministries is making of DPR. And at the time when we select the company for making DPR, the lowest is the criteria. And some of the DPR companies, they are proved to be so worst and they are responsible for the road accidents in the country. I am always blaming them. I don't know whether many of the people may be related with I am very sorry for that. The defective DPR, and I just asked one question to our Honorable Secretary. If you want to go for hospital, why you are not calling tender for operation and going for the operation? At that time, you need good doctor. You need good medicine. But at the time of the DPR making, the lowest is the criteria. So first of all, this is the time, the DPR, where it starts. And it creates a lot of complications. And then after that, it starts additional scope of work, then different extension of work, all many problems are there. So my suggestion is, using this digital technology, whether we can march towards perfection. I always telling to the people that no one is perfect and no one can claim that he is perfect. Uttam, Adik, Uttam, Sarvottam, up to infinity. That you cannot catch your own image. There is no person who is 100% perfect. But we can be 99% perfect. And the, one of the important things which I always I understand, the government system in the management of road construction, management of infrastructure project, we don't want to listen from our past experiences. We are making same and same mistake again and again. If in one of the decision, if the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in the country, has given the order, on the basis of that, we should formulate our policy and improve our thinking. Because he, this is the highest authority. But still, the same point, Again, we reject the cases and going up to the Supreme Court and wasting the money, wasting the time. What is the reason? I never understand. So somewhere, we need digital transformation. In road construction, even in the quality audit, even into the uh, same time, the performance audit. The financial audit is very important. But I always tell it to the people that the performance audit is more important than financial audit. The way in which the projects are delayed, we need to find out what are the reasons. And now the, because of the digital technology, everything is available. We can improve everything. We can go towards perfection. And that is exactly, I feel that, that one thing which I will request you, the cost of construction is also one of the important subject. We can reduce the cost of construction. I am not engineer, so I am not the expert about it. Every year, we are spending 10 to 15,000 crores making repairs of the road. Now, I, we have just given present, I, I don't know, when every time there is a budget for the state government for maintenance of road. So, I just, with my experience in my own constituency, we are making a lot of cement concrete road, white topping of road. And at 6 inch and 8 inch white topping, we have the life of the road for 25 to 30 years. There is no maintenance. But I never understand, every 2-3 years we are making maintenance, everywhere the proposal is coming and we are doing it. Why we are wasting the money? If we can make the white topping of the road, and if we can make, our, uh, that was my suggestion to our engineers, that if we can make some bitumen surfacing on the concrete road, it can it is going to improve the quality of the road. I remember, particularly in the western part of our country, in Mumbai and other area, there are a lot of rains are there. In Mumbai, Goa, everywhere, every year, whatever the quality of road you may have, but there are a problem because of bitumen road. When there are more rains, again we repeat it and making the bitumen road, Though the road of good quality, two to three years, road collapse. 
so somewhere we need to plan particularly in the sea area we are using steel i never understand the life of the steel as far as in the particularly near to the sea every time the life of the bridge is not more somewhere near to the sea of 50 km area we need to use stainless steel because rusting is a big problem so somewhere we have to take the some decision related with the quality audits that how we can reduce the cost of construction and how we can improve the quality of construction and by using the different technology i always feel that the innovation entrepreneurship science technology research skill and successful practices we name it as knowledge and conversion of knowledge into wealth is the future and for that reason when we are to make the audit of any project performance audit quality audit then cost audit everywhere we need to use digital technology it can be really a good thing i am just giving you the example i have given one proposal to forest and environment ministry and we have a meeting with them our dg was there and we have given a, a good proposal to ministry that we should have a tree bank the coal india will have a tree bank nhi will have a tree bank we will make g tagging and at least now we have taken a decision that we will plant the tree of 3 meter height and we have purchased the tree from rajamundri and now there is no trees are available we have just purchased 75 lakh trees of 3 meter and with a cost of 80 rupees per tree and now we are making plantation and everywhere it is there now we can easily understand where exactly now i have just give them the suggestion if the cutting of the tree is there there will be punishment not punishment but there will be policy that they have to at least a uh, plantation of 10 trees for one tree if the cutting is there if the transplantation of tree is there there is five tree new tree plantation will be there so by this we can increase the plantation we can give motivation inspiration to the stakeholders that you should develop the tree bank and by making this uh, we can increase the uh, green area for country in my own city we have the office of remote sensors so i just got appointed to visit that office and i suggest them that you should prepare the green map of every district every nagar parishad kshetra municipal kshetra at the same time you can make it of gram panchayat and give me the record and we should have a state level competition that which gram panchayat is number 1 as per the plantation is concerned which nagar parishad is number 1 as per plantation is concerned which municipal corporation is uh, number 1 and we can uh, give them award and there will be a competition in the mind of the so in the, all the people to for the plantation of the tree it will increase the plantation and your problem will be solved but somewhere our engineers are hesitant they have lot of hesitation for plantation tree in road side i say why you have hesitation <laughs> the problem is that we are making plantation the forest people will come and they declare it as a forest and when you need to make the we uh, increasing the width of the road they take the objection that you cannot make the road so people are telling no 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 don't plant the tree this type of problems we are facing because we don't have cooperation coordination and communication between the stakeholders that is the reason that the, there is lot of delays for eot and cos year two years not taking decisions i don't know what what is the problem in it and many of the people going to the file if suppose if you have a evidence by using digital technology you can use it now we are using drone for agriculture we just understand what is to be the most important advantage of it if we because i am farmer if we are using drone uh, in place of drone if you use urea for sugar cane we are using four bags of urea and 75% is wastage and 25% is going to the plant but if we use drone then 75% urea is going to the plant and only 25% is wastage and now we have the nano urea nano fertilizer so 500 ml of bottle of nano urea is equal to one bag of urea 
So this is going to say we are importing the urea of 60,000 crore every year. So by using technology, I will request you again one thing. You use drone, but don't make lithium ion batteries. You can go for bioethanol. It is the fuel, green fuel from the former. And already I have initiated it. And now the uh, we have flex engine. You know the model of Toyota, name as Camry. And now they are next month they are going to launch their models with hybrid technology. The 60% the all Toyota car will be available on bioethanol 100%, and by which they will run, they will uh, create electricity 40%. And the cost of the petrol will come to 25 to 30 rupees per liter as far as the cost saving is there. And it is import substitute cost effect to pollution free and indigenous. So every time there is changing in the technology. And changing is obvious. So my suggestion for all of you that whatever the digital technology which we are using, first of all, we need to use for what reason we are using. If you want to make reduce the cost, then cost audit will be there by using the technology. Then time is the problem. Even in your own office, you can understand. I was just four or five days before, there was one function arranged by the Prime Minister for felicitation of our Chief Justice of India. One of the Supreme Court judges just come to me and telling me about one road in Rajasthan. And he was telling me everything is good, Mr. Gadkari, I really appreciate you, but this road is very bad between the Udaipur and Udaipur uh, and Ahmedabad. And that road, people are, I hear the in charge of the Rajasthan also. So many people meeting. So you can make the audit of the road, you can understand, you can see the road, what is to be problem, where is construction is going on, how much civil uh, construction he has completed. You can check it from your own office. You don't need to go to visit on the site. So these are the technologies where everywhere there are a lot of chance for upgradation of infrastructure in the country. We will reduce the cost. We will reduce the time period. We will make our decision making process transparent, time bound, result oriented and qualitative. And we will complete the project on time with good quality and reducing the cost. That is the use of technology. One thing is very important that when we are using the technology, we need to understand how we can reduce the cost. How we can use the different type of materials, particularly the waste materials. And how we can reduce the cost without compromise with the quality. By which 100% it is really very much useful for the country. So I am really happy that the digital technology and infrastructure is a, is a, is a very, very important subject. It is not only for road sector, but for the rural road, for the power project, for all type of thing, this digital system technologies are very useful for reducing the cost and improve the quality. And also the time is the most important thing. And now that I feel that even you don't need to go on site, even in the office also, you can understand what is the progress of the project. So this is to be very helpful for the country. We are encouraging all type of new technology and the most important thing where I will request all organizers that first of all you arrange the workshop of using digital technology for the companies who are making DPR. Shurvat waha se karo. Agar wo sudhrenge nahi to pura tumhara Satyamash ho jayega. Aap a new Mercedes car in the hands of it, in the hands of driver, even he don't know how to operate and what the problem will be. So, first of all, you start from that level, even from land acquisition also. What Mr. Sinaji was saying, land acquisition, water conservation. It's really, I am working in water conservation. We have just, I received two delete, not for road construction, it's for agriculture science from two universities. Because agriculture is my passion. And we have just constructing one road on NHR. Alokji visited there. In form, we make the world record, making that road from Amrauti to Akola. And there we need some aggregate. So we have taken a decision that we will make 
taking that uh, all aggregate from the Punjabara Agriculture University, Akola. I phoned to Honorable Vice Chancellor and he gave the permission. So we made 36 Amrus Sarovar and create irrigation for 10,000 acre of land of university. 22,000 wells are now charged and uh, 668 villages water problem is solved without making single cost, not a single expenditure of single rupees. It's free of cost because it was a success story that we need aggregate. Our contractor has taken that aggregate and making the legs. I remember once upon a time I was in Mumbai when I was minister, we had to make this Verli Bandra ceiling project. So there was, we need lot of aggregate and the cost for making, you know that the Mahim bridge. After that, we have taken a lot of aggregate and making that all uh, area are connecting to Verli and there was lot of aggregate we need. So I just uh, was looking after it, but I understand one contractor was interested in Pawai because he want to construct big scheme there, Niranjan Hiranandan. So I call Niranjan, you are doing only yes, but my problem is I, we have got a big hill and where to dispose all this material is a problem. Well, I will solve your problem. So the cost at that time was estimated 350 crore. I am talking about it is to be 1998-99. So we have completed work with the 125 crore saving because one party was interested to dispose of their material and other party was clearly interested to taking the material. So it resolved the problem, we saved 2000 crore and today it comes to 2000 crore. Only to understand what are the need of the most people and on the basis of that we resolve that issue. So uh, today also in Nagpur, we have demolishing one bridge. The Nagpur metro is doing. And in one of the lake, we are making Chaupati. So I suggest the metro people that you should take all this material to near to the lake and we will make the chaupati after that one feet of sand will be there. The other material will be from all the waste coming from the, this bridge. And we can use it there. Only you get to make the transport cost for that. So there are a lot of things where you can save the cost. You can use the good material by also you can save the cost. You can reduce the time period. And now your positive approach and your vision for quality construction and reducing the cost using the digital technology, it can be ultimate thing for the country. And for that reason, only important thing is everywhere in the department, on the same type of work which we are doing, we need to have cooperation, coordination and communication between the stakeholders. We have to improve all type of system. We have to understand what are the strength and what are the weaknesses of the cases. On the basis of that, we have to formulate the policy and by using digital technology, it is going to the ultimate stage where we can develop the good infrastructure with the low cost of international standard in the country. I am really happy that you are thinking in good line. Our ministry will support that and 100% with this conference, we will uh, also we need to formulate the policy for that that how we can take the help of all these people who are the expert and by which we can reduce the cost and improve the quality and time period and giving good standard of infrastructure to the country. I am giving my thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir, for your valuable insight and emphasis on the importance of the role of technology. It will definitely encourage the industry for the innovation in the current running projects as well as the new technology, you know, developments initiatives of the government. Now, uh, the National BIM and Digital Twin Strategy Report, which has been prepared under the aegis of non-executive National BIM and Digital Twin Think Tank, sets out an action-oriented strategic plan for the adoption of BIM and Digital Twin for government and decision makers across the construction and infrastructure community of India to develop its capability as the construction leaders and act as an exemplary example for infrastructure development worldwide. Okay. 
The report considers the whole sector approach to springboard the development of national BIM and digital twin policy across the subsector infrastructure project and overcome the bottleneck which currently faces the Indian construction and infrastructure sector. And it is a pleasure to have the report released by our Honorable Minister Nitin Gadkari and other dignitaries on the dais. Thank you, everyone. And we have a small token of appreciation as a gesture of gratitude to our guests on the dais. May I request Sanjay to present the memento to our Honorable Minister. In the spirit of Going Green initiative, as a token of appreciation for our dignitaries, we are offering saplings. Sanjay, may I request you to honor Sri Nagendra Nath Sinha. Sri S.K. Nirmal. I now invite Sanjay to give the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Anamika, and uh, it's my pleasure to uh, propose a vote of thanks. I must say that it's a great day. Uh, it's a very historical day, and. Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting Honorable Minister a few times when he just took over in 2014-15. Talk about digital twins, geospatial infrastructure, and made some presentations to him. He's been always very supportive. But sir, today you reminded me something about 2002 and 3. Uh, I've spent about 25 years of my career into technology advocacy, and it was under the Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee that we thought of interlinking the rivers and your colleague Suresh Prabhu was made the chairman of interlinking the rivers. And that time uh, the mapping was not liberated and Suresh Prabhu made a presentation to George Fernandez and talked about in view of uh, absence of uh, maps, how can we actually make, understand rivers and interlink rivers. And then the first map policy came in 2003 as a result of those discussions. So that is how it is the power of, you know, a visionary thinking and forward thinking. And that same policy got revised in 2021 uh, again. So, uh, so you, I very uh, articulately talked about four sectors, water, power, transport, and communication. And most important thing is you have such a kind of emphasis on digitalization. And digitalization is nothing but an interface of physical and digital world. That whatever it is in physical world, you can actually put that into a digital world. And that digitalization, sir, talked about time, quality audit, cost audit, performance audit. I think these are the pillars of productivity and efficiency. These are the pillars of doing things efficiently, with much better speed, with much longer duration of, uh, you know, reliability of that project. And in this backdrop, I would say that this meeting is very important because we have started talking about digital twins and BIM. And BIM and digital twin will not only help actually build your projects today in a less time, with less class of projects, with less resources, but would also help engineers to make a systematic understanding of various options. We talk about 3D, 4D, 5D. This 4D, 5D, 6D is kind of adding additional dimensions of cost and options and timing. So you are able to actually visualize 
20 years, 30 years time down the lane that what kind of infrastructure is needed 20 years, 30 years based on ge geotechnical surveys or flood monitoring or earthquake monitoring or things like that so that you build resilient infrastructure, sustainable infrastructure and more durable infrastructure. Sir, uh, thank you very much for also, uh, you know, sharing uh, your experiences and that's a very on the ground experiences so which we have heard you from, you know, educating the DPR uh, companies first. Of course, that's where the whole journey starts and that's where we make mistakes because we don't integrate and understand the systematic view of the whole project. And uh, those who prepare DPR probably never go into the construction phase. So uh, that's the challenge and we have to look at the connectivity. Sir, we as a group here, uh, you know, some of the companies and some of the government organizations, including your ministry, uh, Mr. Amit Ghosh, who has been championing this, uh, you know, technology adoption. And now we have uh, Mr. Alok, who is also a member IT and administration. He has very clearly promised us to make more and more use of technology, so as DZ roads. And uh, Mr. Sinha actually talked about uh, kind of information management system information management system which is helping us uh, you know being more transparent being more uh, productive so what i would like to say in the class is digital twin and bim or bim and digital twin are kind of associated so bim is a tool to achieve digital twin and but before you go to bim you have a geospatial infrastructure and geospatial infrastructure combined with bim which is geo bim makes digital twin happen and digital twin is something which is very critically important for maintaining the projects. So 20 years, 30 years life cycle of this project. So you have a lot of saving, not only in undertaking these projects, but also maintaining these projects. So that's the kind of efficiency uh, we as a technology bring in. Sir, I would like to request you uh, to uh, consider, we as a group of professionals, from the universities and the industry and the government have come up with this non-executive think tank, which means it is a voluntary think tank to provide kind of advisory for public policy. And I would request your office kindly to look into setting up a BIM and Digital Twin Promotion Board, something which can talk about uh, outlining the potential role of this technology into the economy as a whole. Infrastructure is specifically, and build a futuristic direction and futuristic policy which can be relevant for next 20 years or 15 years. So I would request your office to kindly consider setting up a BIM and Digital Twin Strategy Think Tank or a policy environment which could lay the foundation for implementation and deployment of these technologies across the infrastructure projects. So with this, I would like to thank you once again. and. Uh, Thank you to all the delegates and our partners in organizing this conference and all the officials of the government of India and especially Honorable Minister who has just came, come from, uh, I think, I believe from Nagpur. Uh, he just arrived from airport and came directly to this place. Thank you very much, sir.